Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Mailbag. Remember, these are questions and comments that you guys have put on the channel and I'm humbly trying to answer. Um, so this week, if I pick up the right piece of paper, all the questions um, are on a specific video. Now, normally what I try to do is I try to sort of take a selection of questions across a couple of t a number of topics um, just so I'm not just covering one thing all the time but I've had so many questions on this specific video that I'm going to do the entire one of these on just one video and that video is the Roland MX1 setting up your MX1 for your environment 2016 January 2016. In fact it says 3rd of January, I think I actually remember recording this on New Year's Day because I was being rather boring, I suppose. So the first one comes from Fiddlesticks Music. And given the fact that you spelt music as Z-I-K, I'm assuming that you're based in Germany or somewhere in that area. Uh, but, 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 and he asks, or she asks, uh, is there a way to turn down the brightness of the LEDs on the unit like you can on the TR-8, the TR-8S at System 8 and System 1? Right, honestly, I've not really looked at this. So I did actually pull the MX-1 out of the studio the other day and I sat down and I had a very, very good look at the MX-1. And in all honesty and truth, I cannot find a combination of keys that does anything to do with dimming the LEDs on the MX-1 unit. I'm not saying there isn't a setting to do it. It's just it's, it's undocumented. Um, at the moment, so Roland haven't released any documentation that says this is the combination of keys that you need to press to actually perform this function. Um, there's nothing in, uh, in the setup of the MX-1 to allow you to do this. Um, and as I played, and played with a number of keys doing various bits and bobs and I couldn't get the LEDs to dim. Doesn't mean it's not a, it's not a feature, it's just it's undocumented and Roland haven't shared it with us yet. Hello Roland, is there a feature to do this? turn the LEDs up and down, the brightness. Um, or maybe what Roland need to do is Roland need to release a patch to the market that will actually allow um, us to, uh, to perform this function. But at the moment, I think the answer is no. OK, this one, next one is from Henry Zerat. Zizar, uh, Henry Zizarat. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm world's worst at pronouncing names, you know that. Uh, thanks for the informative video. Can anyone t detail steps to sync the MX-1 when in external mode to, tem to tempo to the Cubase? Um, I'm going to do a video about this, right? Okay, there, there will be a video that will be following this video within the next week um, where I'm going to talk through this whole area because I get asked this question so many times. Um, and the key to this is setting up the master clock on the MX-1. Now, I am assuming that that is exactly what we're talking about here. Um, you, you're trying to sort of get the master clock or one, either the MX-1 or the door to be your master clock. Um, and I, I'm, given that you asked this question quite a while ago, I'm assuming you found the answer. But for those who don't know what the answer is, I'm going to give you the answer now. Um, if you press the sync button on the MX-1, it will tell you where the master clock source is. Um, at the moment. So when you when you press that button it tells you at that point in time where the MX-1 is expecting to find its master clock source. Now the default for the MX-1 is internal, okay? It's going to use whatever the clock generation system of the MX-1 is as its master clock source and it will then give that out to any piece of equipment that is, is attached to the MX-1 and assuming you've got those pieces of equipment set to external mode you will be able to effectively um, that control those clocks from the MX-1. Now, the MX-1 has a number of other different modes, okay? I'm not going to go through it. I'll do this in a video, but it has auto, internal, MIDI, USB 1, USB 2, USB 3, USB 4, and PC, all right? If you want to synchronize the clock to your door, you need to make sure your door is the master clock, and you need to then set the MX-1 to PC. Now, this is assuming that you've got the MX-1 and the door connected via USB. If you're using MIDI, you've got to make sure, obviously, that the door is coming into the the MX-1 on MIDI in, and then you set the master clock source to MIDI. Hopefully that answers the question. Uh, 
Okay, this one's from James Roberts. Brilliant info. Question for anyone. I'm using Live 9 version running on a Mac. I have all the RE gear with the MX1 set to external mode. Uh, set up the routing, routing correctly so the external gear can receive MIDI notes from Ableton Live. I'm using the MX1 uh, as the master sync. However, the audio clips I play on the Ableton are out of sync lag with the external hardware. Uh, I've seen people using the same setup. No issue. Can't find a resolution. Have you any suggestions? Um, please see the previous answer. So my experience is that you need to set the door as the master. So in Ableton, you need to tell Ableton that it is the master clock. And then in MX1, you need to, on the MX1, you need to set the MX1 to PC. So it, the syncing on the MX1 to PC. So it is receiving its clock signal from the door. Then theoretically, everything should then be sequenced in time. Okay, so when you trigger something on the, on the, on the Ableton, it will be exactly when you expect it to be. The reason I think you're getting a lag, lag or a sync is because the clock on Ableton and the clock on the MX1, even though they're all running at 120 beats per minute for argument's sake, they're not. The reality is that the clocks go out of sync unless they've got a time code between the two of them telling them where they are, they will continue to run at a different rate ex um, based on how each one is being generated. Hopefully that answers that one. And the last one for this section from Many Minds. Um, very good tutorial, a great help. Just to add, you can, sh um, you as you showed, set minutes before flashing comes on. If you turn the value knob all the way to the left, it can be turned off altogether. Very good point. So this is, um, Roland call it demo mode. I call it screensaver mode, but all the RE equipment has this same feature. Um, and in, in essence, what, what happens is, after so many minutes of inactivity, all the LEDs on the MX1 will flash in some random, what seems like random patterns, but they're not. They're actually um, patterns that have been programmed into the MX1. Um, and it basically does that until you uh, effectively touch a control and then it stops. And then it'll wait so many minutes again and then it'll start again. Um, and I tend to have mine set to about 30 minutes, uh, which I think is sort of the outer edge. Uh, I can't remember what it's set to now because it's a long time since I set it. Uh, it actually, it might be 10 minutes. I might have mine set to 10 minutes, actually. Um, and therefore, when you don't touch it for 10 minutes, it sort of goes into this flashy mode. Um, so yes, and if you don't want it to go into flashy mode, effectively, you turn it all the way out to the one side, down to zero minutes, and it won't ever go into this demo mode or flashy mode, is what I call it. Um, but it's a purely personal preference. I must admit, when you're working in a darkened studio, um, actually, it looks quite funky when you're sitting there working away and you've got the, the drum machine and the MX-1 and the System 8 and the System 1 all sort of doing this sort of sweepy stuff going on. It's, uh, it's, quite, it's quite nice, actually. <laughs> and that concludes this week's mailbag. Bye-bye. Remember, hit that like button if you like what you saw. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified about more rants, more mailbag, more questions and answers, and more videos about this sort of stuff when it's loaded to the channel. Until next time, bye-bye.